Hello everyone, this is Reza Dorani. In today's video, we will build a multi-select checkbox experience in Power Apps. We will leverage the form control that is connected to a SharePoint list that has a multi-select choice column. This renders as a combo box control in Power Apps. We will transform this into a multi-select checkbox experience. So let's get started with the video, but first, my introduction. The scenario for the demo is a work progress tracker app that leverages data from a SharePoint list. I have leveraged the Microsoft list template called work progress tracker to create this list and added some sample data in there. One of the columns in this list is called category and this column is of type choice in which the user can make multiple selections. Now in my Power App, I have the home page here that shows me the data from that SharePoint list and I can refine and filter the data right here. I can select a record and look at the details of the record. I can edit the record or I can go ahead and create new work items on the fly. Now once you create the form control and connect it to your data source, in my case the SharePoint list, the category column is a multi-select choice column. The control that Power Apps leverages for the multi-select choice column is the combo box control. And right here is where the user can make multiple selections. Now let's say I go ahead and select all the options that are available here. If you observe, it says that for the category column right now, there are five items selected. Now which items are selected? What are their values? If I would like to look at them, I would have to open the category option right here and look at the values that I have selected. If I go and select an existing item and let's say I edit this and I select all the category options. Once again, it's telling me that there are five, but which five? And let's assume I have 20 options in my category. Even though I pick four or five, I won't come to know which ones I've selected, at least not through the UI. And if I click submit, my data got updated. And if I head back to my record, yes, I see it right here because I am in view mode. But when I'm editing or creating, when I see that combo box control, I don't see that value. So how do we go about changing this behavior? One simple option is you can stick to the combo box control and add a label to show the values on the combo box control. So for that, what we can do is this, I can go to advanced and unlock this data card because I would like to make a change. I will increase the height of this data card and insert a label inside this data card and let's say I place this label right here. I go to the properties of the label and set auto height to true. And the text property of this label would be, I'll grab the name of the combo box control first. And then for the text property, the formula would be as follows. I will use the concat function. It expects a table first. The table would be the items that are selected in that category column. So the control name dot selected items. And then what do you want to concatenate? What's my expression? It will be the value contained in there. And I will add a comma with a space along with it. So now if I go ahead and preview this app, as you can see, it's giving me all the category values that I selected in the category combo box. And if I go ahead and deselect certain options, I will see those values right here. So that's one way of getting around the issue of the combo box not showcasing all the items because of the space limitations that it has. However, a better approach to this would be to replace this entire behavior with multi-select checkboxes. So instead of having the user pick the values from a combo box, we provide all those values in the form of checkboxes. So for that, the first step after unlocking the data card, of course, is the combo box control is not required. So what I will go ahead and do is the items property of the combo box control. I will go ahead and grab that formula. And what this formula basically does is it connects to the SharePoint list, which is in my case, the work progress tracker list, and then gets the choices from that category column, which is of type choice. And that's how it is getting all those values in a tabular fashion. So now that I've copied this formula, I will go ahead and delete this combo box control. 
And the moment I delete the combo box control, I will receive errors because there were certain formulas in that data card that was dependent upon that control that I just deleted. So we will fix that shortly. Now next step, I would like to insert a gallery control in this data card so that I can create that multi-select checkbox experience. I will go ahead and insert a blank vertical gallery. This gallery will sit outside of the form control. So what you could do is this, go ahead and cut this, go to the data card, select any control within the data card and then right click and paste so that that gallery control now sits within this data card. Now, of course, the gallery has a height and width, so you will have to adjust that so that it sits correctly within your data card experience. So let's say for now, I have just adjusted it and placed it right here. I have renamed my gallery here to gal check boxes. And for the gallery control, we will modify the template and insert a checkbox. Now to do that, once you have the gallery control selected, you will see the small little pencil icon right here that says edit gallery. I will click on this. And now once I have the context of the first item, I will head over to input and right here I will select checkbox. So this will now place a checkbox in the gallery and I will place it right here on the top. I will go ahead and reduce the height of the gallery as well. Now in my case, I have more real estate horizontally to fit more checkboxes. So in order to fit more checkboxes, once again, select the gallery control. And for the gallery control, there is a property called wrap count. In my case, I have enough real estate to fit three checkboxes per row. So I will change my wrap count to three. And just like that, it places three checkboxes in one row. Now for the gallery control, the items property, I will replace the default custom gallery sample data with the formula that I copied previously, which is getting the category values from my choice column in my SharePoint list. Now, once I plug that in, in the items property, head back to the checkbox control and you can directly select the checkbox control so that you have the context of the first item. And right here for the text property, I will replace this with this item dot value. And this value is coming from those choices. So now if I preview the app, I receive those same choices of that combo box control in the form of a multi-select checkbox. I will copy the name of my gallery control and let's look at those two errors. The first error right here is related to the control that we deleted. So instead of the reference to that control, let's just replace it with our gallery control reference. That's the first one. And the second one is the issue related to the update property of the data card. For now, I will just go ahead and delete this formula. We will plug this formula in shortly. Now, because I've created my own custom control, when the user checks a checkbox or unchecks a checkbox, I would like to store that information in a collection so that I can use that collection to submit that information to my data source. So for this, once again, by selecting the checkbox control within the gallery, I will head over to the advanced properties. And here we have two formulas on check and on uncheck. So on check, I would like to plug in the following formula, collect collection category data. This is the name of the collection that I'm providing right here. And I would like to go ahead and collect this item. That is the item that has been checked. And on uncheck of the checkbox, I would like to go ahead and plug in the formula that says remove from this collection, this item. So when I check, it will add that item to the collection. When I uncheck, it will remove the item from that collection. Let's see if that works right now. Of course, my collection would be empty. I pick design, research and engineering. If I head over to view and collections, and if I go to the collection that I just created, here are the three values. If I preview the app and let's say I uncheck engineering, this time I should have only two values, which is design and research. And those are the only two values that I currently have right here. For the data card, there are a couple of key properties. One is the default property. So that's the default value of that data card. I will set it to this collection. And another one is the update property. That's the value that gets pushed out to the data source when actual changes are made. And for this property as well, I will plug in the entire collection of my category information. 
Now, if I go ahead and preview this app right now, and for this work progress task, which is create a strategy document, if I go ahead and let's say I just add marketing and design, and I will go ahead and submit this. The work task ID is one. So if I go back to the home page, for one, the data that it is returning is marketing and design. That means it is accurately applying the values for me in there. Now, if I try and create a new item, it is still maintaining those values for me. It's not clearing the data for me. When I am creating this new item, my formula here is resetting the form and changing the mode of the form to new. So I'm creating a new form, but it is still maintaining the old data of the collection in there. And the reason is because I need to clear my collection every time the user lands on the screen. So for that, on my form screen, on the on visible property right here, I will go ahead and plug in the following formula. Clear that collection data. So if I go ahead and create a new item now, you will observe that the default values are all empty. However, if I go ahead and select an existing item, I don't see the values of that item because I've created my own control and the data for which is dependent upon that collection. Now, if every time I lead to the screen, irrespective of in which mode is my form in new form, edit form or view form, and I'm clearing the collection, it will always show up as empty. So once again, when I head over to the screen, yes, on visible of my screen, I would like to clear the collection data, but I would also like to go ahead and add the following formula. If the mode of my form is not equal to new, Okay, that means the form is either in edit mode or in view mode. I'm trying to reuse the form control in the same screen. I have done videos on this. If you would like to check them out. The description of this video has links to those videos. So what I'm doing right here is if the form mode is not equal to new, in that case, go ahead and once again, add data to that collection and the value for which will come from the gallery, which is my main gallery, which is on my home screen dot selected dot category. So if I go back to my home screen, this is my main gallery and selected dot category means whichever record the user selects, get the category column value from that record. So in this case, I have a task, create a strategy document. The values are marketing and design. If I select this now, if you observe the form is in view mode, I cannot make changes right here, but the default values of design and marketing are being maintained. If I change the form to edit mode, in my case, by clicking on this edit icon on the top right, now the form is editable and the user is free to make changes. So for my strategy document work task, maybe I would like to add planning and research to it. I will click submit. The item got recorded. If I head back to my home screen, I can see all those values right here. And if I head back to the record, I have all of those values checked for me in this multi-select checkbox experience. And all of these values are being recorded right here in my SharePoint list correctly for my multi-choice column, even though I changed the behavior from a combo box control to a multi-select checkbox control. And if I select a different record, so let's say I pick the project documentation, the only option is planning. As you can see, the category selected here is planning. And if I create a new work item, this will be empty. This is a mandatory field in my data source. If I try and submit, even the required field validations will be respected. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.